a Rover story, chapter 37, by rocket, like by, I know it's a homophone, by. Bye, rocket, Fly says when the rocket booster breaks away. Fly and I are together inside a spacecraft container that was housed inside the rocket. The rocket has left, but the spacecraft remains. The spacecraft is dark with white walls. I inspect every inch of it with my 23 cameras. From what I am able to scan, it does not look that substantially different from the laboratory. The air quality is the same, sterile, clean, without any outside particles. The noises are similar to the laboratory too. There is the same slow hiss of the air filters, the same buzz of a fan. The difference though, is that we are alone in this spacecraft, Fly and me. We are hurtling away from Earth. This is the plan, I remind myself. But wait, this was not the plan. I say back, Journey was supposed to be here. I had always assumed Journey would be here, that she would be the leader. Fly, do you think it is a problem that Journey is not here? I think it is a problem that you think it is a problem that Journey is not here. Fly says, beeps and boops, I say. That is what Journey would say. I know, I wanted to say it because it makes me feel like she is here with us. You know, if she was here with us, she would tell you to trust the hazmats. This must be their plan. I do not know if she would use the word trust. That is a human word and she would also remind you that humans are irrational, I say. Yes but they still have a plan. You are right, I say. Fly, you are very right. I must focus on the plan. I was built to follow the hazmat plans. I will trust in the plan, or at least I will try to. But the real problem is the hazmat plan already has a flaw, and it is not just that they did not send Journey. It is that the code has not arrived. I was supposed to receive a code, a code that will tell me what to do. It is on my list of instructions. Right now, I do not have any instructions. Fly and me are aimlessly hurtling through space. That is a fact that I cannot think about too much or I start to feel like one of Xander's dark eye circles. But it is a fact that is proving impossible not to think about. How do you know it will come? Fly asks. I don't but I also know that Raina will make sure to send it. How do you know it will come from Raina? Fly asks. I don't. Then why did you say that? I don't say. I believe it will. I hope it will. I'm not sure Fly will understand the concept of belief or hope. I'm not sure that I do. Instead I say, beeps and boops, you ask a lot of questions. You are right. I do, Fly agrees. <laughs> Dear Rez, that was so cool. My whole class cheered when the rocket took you up into space. Can I admit something? I put my hands over my eyes during the first part of the launch. It wasn't that I didn't think you could do it. I was just so nervous for you. But then you were soaring up into space. And everyone in my class was clapping, even Brian Woods, who never smiles about anything, was clapping. Like, I know it's an achievement that you're in space. OMG, you're in space. <laughs> but you should also feel very proud of yourself for making Brian Woods clap. At first, I was so mad at mom because she didn't let me stay home to watch the launch with her. She promised me, I'll get to come to the lab to watch your landing with everyone. But she said, for launch, it's different. But right after you got into space, she texted me with lots of exclamation points and hearts. Oh, it was pretty cool getting to watch it with my class, though, because Mrs. Ennis let us keep the TV on even after you got into space and mom was interviewed. My whole class started clapping again when we saw her on TV. She even thanked dad and me, and then she thanked city in Arabic. I translated for my whole class, which was such an awesome feeling. 
mom told everyone on TV how it is going to take you seven months to get to Mars. Seven months is a long time to be in a spaceship. Do you think you'll get bored, lonely? I hope not. Too bad you don't have dad with you. He'd bake you about 700 oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't eat cookies, which is too bad really, because I keep telling you cookies, especially the ones dad makes are the best. I can't get to bed tonight, but for the first time in a long time, it's not because I'm sad or worried. It's because I feel like jumping up and down. And maybe it's because I ate too many cookies. Oh, but that's impossible. Okay, good night. For real this time, your friend, Sophie. P.S. You're in space! <laughs>